You know, an interesting thing, and I'm not going to turn the, here, but I'll just quote it to you. In the 103rd Psalm, and I recommend that to you if you want to read something encouraging. The 103rd Psalm, right about in the middle of it, it says that uh, about God, the psalmist says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. And it says a very interesting thing. For he remembereth our frame, and he knoweth that we are dust. What that says is he is sympathetic to us because he knows what weak stuff we're made of. Now, so God, knowing all about us, knowing that we're flawed, knowing that we have failures, knowing that we're prone to failure, knowing that not just as Christians we have failures in the past, we might have a failure tomorrow. <laughs> you ever think about that? God knows the future just like we know the past. He knows the future better than we know the past. <laughs> He knows all about us, and knowing all about us, he decided he wanted to have a love relationship with us. And as John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world, he did something about it. He gave his only begotten son. That means he sent Jesus to the cross to eliminate our uh, liability for all the things wrong that we have done and all the things wrong we might do. That's what that means. We sometimes, you know, say, well, Jesus carried our sins in his own body on the tree. That's 1 Peter 2.24, which is true. Sin is such a delineated kind of theological word. word. Uh, I like something the message translation says from Isaiah 53. It says, everything wrong with us, he carried. Now, think about that. I think that's a good way to say it. Everything, God knowing everything wrong with us, everything that could be wrong with us. Jesus took all those things to the cross. And as John the Baptist said, there is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So I would ask you this morning, do you think he got the job done or not? I think he got the job done. I don't think he was up there suffering, doing all that for nothing. He got the job done. He took away, and what does that mean? He took it out of the picture. You know, in the Old Testament, they did things that were symbolic of things that were realities in the New Testament. Types and shadows, we call them sometimes. And uh, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would take a goat and they would uh, lay hands on the goat, and they would pronounce over the goat all the sins of the people, and they would send it off into the wilderness, and it was gone, and they never saw it again. See, that was a picture of the way that, uh, you know, in that 103rd Psalm, he goes on to say, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath the Lord removed our transgressions from us. So here's another question for you. How far is the east from the west? How far is that? Well, it's impossible to say, but I'll tell you what, they never meet. <laughs> They'll never meet again. They don't meet. East and west are opposites. Isn't that right? They don't come together. That's the reason he says that. So, uh, if that's true, and it is, God so loved us. Think about this. Uh, John 3.16 says he loved the world. Are you in the world? Uh, I think you are, <laughs> right? No aliens here today. <laughs> uh, we're from the world. God so loved the world. You could say, and you'd be justified in saying, God so loved me. He knew all about you and everything that could go wrong in your life and has gone wrong. And he put it on Jesus, and Jesus took it out of the picture. Now, when that goat went away into the wilderness, that means everything wrong got put on the goat, and it took it out of the picture. It's out of the picture as far as God's concerned. That's how much he loves us. He wants all of the things that cause us to feel alienated from him. And again, that kind of sense of alienation exists right up here in our minds. Now Paul, you see, that all constitutes good news, right? You notice as I was talking the last three or four minutes, no threats in that. There's no room for threats. The reason there's no threats, threats with hell or those kinds of things is because God doesn't intend for us to be there. Now I suppose if a person was just bound and determined, I suppose, you know, if a person was just doggedly determined not to have anything to do with God, and just insisted, I suppose, I, you know, I don't know. I, even in that case, I don't know. I'm not God. I can't make that decision. In fact, as Christians, I think we're wrong for telling people, you're going to go to hell for that. We're not in the position to judge that. Is that okay? It's not our job. It's his job. And even, I, I don't even want to say. Our job, you know what our job is? Our job is to tell people the gospel, just like Paul said here. Which is good news. That's what I started. I was about to ask myself, how did I get off on this? Oh, yeah, it was good news. That's right. And I read those church signs. Oh, I've read a lot of church signs. They tend to be kind of uh, mm, threatening sometimes. I saw one of my own. I saw one that I saw in Woodward at another church. Uh, I don't want to you know, make you think of some local church here, so I'm pointing fingers. So I'm pointing clear over to Woodward. They'll never know. Um, 
I was driving down the street and I saw this sign and it said, God is faithful, are you? <laughs> but, well, you know, now that you mention it, uh, maybe not. You know? <laughs> I mean, I've, I, you know, it made me feel really self-conscious, you know. But you see, you're not a Christian because you're faithful. You're a Christian because he's faithful. And you put your faith in him. Now, let's go on reading here. Look at verse 16. He said in verse 15, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. He would be ready to preach it to us in Alva too. Uh, verse 16, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now, by the way, the reason he says that, not meaning ashamed like embarrassed, like, uh, you know, like a student might be embarrassed to carry their Bible with them or something, you know. He didn't mean that. He means uh, that he got a lot of attacks and criticism for this message. A lot of people didn't like it and didn't agree with it and attacked him. He's basically saying here, I am not going to give up on, I'm not going to back off, I'm not going to water down this message. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm sticking to it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Did you notice that now he says it's not just good news generically. He said it's the good news of Christ, meaning it's about Christ. This message that Paul had to convey and this message that we are supposed to convey as the church is about Christ. Now those church signs I'm talking about, and again, this is not a message about church signs. Uh, I'm just using that as an example. When they make you feel self-conscious, or any kind of message that makes you feel self-conscious, it's because it's directed at you, and it's not about Christ then. See, I could get up here, you know, you could say all kinds of things. You could stand behind this box and say all kinds of things, right? And it sounds authoritative, and, you know, it sounds like it... Uh, you know, has some kind of impact. And in a, in a sense, I guess so. I guess in a way, maybe it's, it's as though I'm speaking, you know, for God. So I want to be careful about it. But you see, if I stand up here and say something that makes you feel self-conscious and turns your attention toward yourself, then it's not the gospel of Christ. Because the gospel of Christ is good news about Christ. It's not about you. I hope that's okay. Now, you do have a part in it. Ephesians 2.8 tells you what your part is. Ephesians 2.8 says... For by grace you're saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Now that little word, through faith, is your part. By grace, through faith. Just like it says on this little sign here, by grace, through faith. That's why we hung that up. And I got that from Charlie and Janet had that little sign at the sandwich yard. Remember that? And it's hanging back here. You let me have that. It was very nice of you. And April looked online, found that image on there, and we got this little banner made. Because I thought that was such a great, it, you know, succinctly puts it, uh, God's part and our part in a nice little statement, by grace through faith. Grace is his part, our part, just two little words, through faith. But the rest of that verse says, by grace you're saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Meaning it's not about you, it's not about your work, it's not about your struggle, not about your moral striving, it's all about him. By grace you're saved, through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. How much of a burden is it to receive a gift? Anybody ever received a gift? Did you, did you think, oh, no, I don't want to have to go and receive this gift. Oh, that's such a burden. I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, man, you know, wake me when it's over. No, you're excited. It's easy, isn't it? Is it easy? Yeah. It is easy. You just, and, and it's exciting, too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's exciting to receive gifts. By grace, you're saved through faith that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, meaning he gives it to us. And all you've got to say is thank you. That's all and you've received his gift. You, ha you recognize and say, thank you. I'll, I'll take it. I'll accept it. And then it says in the next verse, verse 10, I'm quoting what I'm not even reading here. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Created means it's the action of a creator. He is the one who is at work in our lives as Christians. It's not we who are at work. Our work, if you want to know what it is, when they ask Jesus, what is the work of God? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? He said, this is the work of God that you believe on the one he sent. That's our work, just to trust Jesus. That's it. How hard is that? Well, uh, it's hard in the sense you've got to stick with it and you've got to not be distracted from it. Everything wants to distract us from it. Oh, Paul here says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, it's of Christ. That's what I started to say. It's the good news and it's about Christ. It's not the gospel of you, it's the gospel of Christ. Everybody see that? Gospel of Christ. It's a message about Christ and what he's done. It's not about you and what you do, it's about him and what he's done. Listen to this. 
for it, what does it mean? The gospel. This message. This message about Jesus and what he's done. Paul says it, this message, is the power of God. Think about that. God has invested his power in a message. Power to get things done or to make changes in your life, to put things in order in your life. You see, if he meant for you to do it, we wouldn't be here talking about the power of God invested in the message about Christ. We'd be telling you, you need to do this and you need to do that. And then after that, there's more things. And after that, there's more things. And you know, I, I say it that way because some Christians feel that way. I, in my own experience, have at times felt that way. That's why I'm so dogmatic about telling, telling you about the gospel because I've been on the other side of it. I've been in that kind of boat where you feel like uh, I've got all, this, all these things I need to do and, uh, and after that it seems like there's more things. It's like a carrot on the end of a stick, you know. You, ever, you know that expression, what that means? Like that, that you might lead an animal, put a carrot on a stick and the animal walks to get to the carrot, but he never gets there. It keeps him going, you know. Um, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's a gift, you see. And it's God's work, not your work. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. Uh, the power is invested in this message. The power of God unto salvation. That word unto means resulting in. Salvation. The power of God resulting in salvation unto everyone that believes. Now notice how universal Paul makes this. Notice how he doesn't make any exceptions. Notice how he says this message is God's power for salvation and it's for everyone with no exceptions. Everyone that just does one simple thing believe. What does it mean to believe? Put your faith in it, or to trust in it, or to rely on it. Uh, and I've mentioned this before, but let me tell it to you again. I'm not a Greek scholar. This is originally written in the Greek language, so I've got to rely on those who are. And I have read a lot of, uh, you know, study materials written by Greek scholars. And one thing I found about this word believe that really helped me, and I thought was uh, good, and so I'm going to share it with you. It was written by a man named J.B. Phillips. And he made a translation of the New Testament into modern speech. It's called the Phillips Translation. You can find it online in bookstores. It's really good. I've got a copy of it. It's a, it's a good modern translation. After he was finished with it, he wrote a book uh, called, uh, I think it's called Gems from the Scriptures or something of that nature. Anyway, it's a book about all the things he learned in the process of translating the New Testament. And one of the things he comments on is what does it mean to believe when the Bible uses this expression to believe on Jesus or to believe in the gospel. What does it really mean? Because sometimes people don't know. How do I know if I'm believing? I, I've had people say that to me before. How do I know if I'm believing? Because he says you're supposed to believe. Well, what he says is here's what the, the Greek word that's translated to believe, here's what it implies or here's what's uh, conveyed in that thought. It means a, um, for instance, he says when it says to believe in Jesus, it means for you to transfer your confidence from yourself to Jesus. It has to do with trusting or relying or uh, uh, placing your confidence in something. Now, uh, when you say it that way, here's what he said. You transfer your confidence from yourself to Jesus. Now, when you say it that way, it gets a little bit pointed because I, in my own experience, have talked to a lot of professing Christians who, when you get right down to it, they're more trusting in themselves than in Jesus. They think it's all riding on them. They think it's all riding on their efforts or their works. Uh, in the things they've done, that that's what their salvation is resting on. It's, you see, it says here uh, that uh, it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Meaning, believes what? This message of the gospel, which is the gospel of Christ. It's all about Christ. 